In this video, we will study what domain name system or in short DNS. So here uh, we have a client. This is typically our browser where we type the uh, name of a website like google.com and then the DNS server returns an IP address corresponding to this name that we entered. For example, let's say 64.233.160 dot 10 so first before understanding domain name system we must understand why do we need this domain name system why cannot we directly contact google so let's understand why do we need it so we as a human when we communicate with each other we generally know each other by names like this is person uh, maybe tom this person is john this person is ram so we call each other with a name but computers, when they communicate with each other, they only understand a number called IP address of different systems. So instead of names, these have IP address, like the one we saw here. So it will have some number in the form ABCD. It can have another number. So they communicate with this. Uh, you can take the analogy of uh, contact number of people. You don't remember their contact numbers. You remember people by their names and their faces so you save their contact numbers by name so whenever you want to know the contact number of john you will look into your contact list and see what is the number of john and then call it so there the mobile number uh, understands 10 digit numbers in order to call somebody similarly the computers they need the ip address to communicate with each other we have just as a humans we are good at remembering these words that's why we map uh, websites to their ip address where we should contact so google.com is mapped to some ip address and what this dns server does is that it gives you the ip address in return for this and then the browser can uh, contact using this provided ip address so now that we know why do we need DNS server uh, or DNS system, uh, let's understand how this all thing works. So before that, let's understand the different types of DNS server. There are multiple types of DNS server. So first let's look at them. So there are four types of DNS server. First is called DNS recursive resolvers. So there is a hierarchy in this system. And we will see that in a minute when we see the exact uh, flow of information between one uh, server to other. Next is root name server. Then we have top level domain or in short TLD name server. And finally we have authoritative name server. So let's look at each of them in some detail. So first is DNS resolver. This is provided by your internet service provider. Whatever internet service you are using, Airtel, Hathaway, Act or any other internet service provider. It connects web browser of our computer to DNS servers. So this is our web browser. Uh, it will contact this uh, DNS resolver. There are a few more steps here before contacting DNS resolver. We will look at that in the complete flow diagram after we look at all these types. And then this will uh, direct you to different re uh, servers. So next is root name server. And there are uh, 13 sets of root name servers. And uh, these are logically named as letter.rootserver.name. And this letter can be from letter A to M. And these are operated by 12 independent organizations. So in order to see the detail of this, you can go to this website, root-servers.org. And here you can see that they provide all the information. You can even click at a particular uh, group and explore the detail there. Here we have 268 groups and so on. So you can find more details here. And then we have TLD name server. So it stores the information of all the domains sharing a common extension. So some websites will end with .com, some will end with .net, .org and so on. So .com TLD name servers store the information of .com websites. They are not storing the IP addresses, but if a request come for a website like google.com, so root name server will redirect it to 
dot com uh, tld name servers and it will in turn return some info of uh, authoritative server where you can get the ip address next this is the last uh, server in this hierarchy and it stores the actual ip addresses of requested websites an authoritative name server for a website can be found using these commands so let's run it in our terminal so ns lookup then you have to type set query equal to ns and then you will type the website for example google.com so it returns you the authoritative servers for google.com now let's see how everything works comes together so how computer loads the website that you have requested so let's see the flow diagram so here is a computer and you have entered google.com in the browser google.com so what it does uh, it sees the browser sees if uh, it has the ip address of google.com cached or not if not then it will contact it will ask the operating system so this is the system os it will ask what is the ip address of google.com so uh, this os will check if uh, this ip address is in its cache or not if it's there it will return it and then the browser can contact google.com using its ip address but if it's not there then uh, the os has a configuration for dns server you can see some setting like 192.168 1 or 39.1 or 2 so you will see something like this so this uh, configuration forwards the query to dns resolver so you remember dns resolver was the first server that we talked about so it will forward the query to dns resolver so here we have a dns resolver so this is managed by your internet service provider so what this dns resolver will do is that it will look into its cache so it will check is google.com ip in cache or not so if it's there in cache then it will return start returning the request and it will back propagate and it will ultimately reach your browser and then the browser can contact but there may be a chance that it's not in its cache then what it will do uh, it will contact the root name server so it will forward the request to root name server so here we have a root name server So what this uh, root name server will do that it will check that the website that is requested is a dot com website so uh, it will accordingly return the ip address of dot com tld server to whom to contact dot com tld ip so it does not give the ip of google.com but it requests it uh, returns a ip address of a tld whom this dns resolver can contact now this dns resolver gets this uh, ip of dot com tld so it can contact this tld so now next we have uh, this tld so this is the dot com tld dot com tld name server so uh, this uh, dns will contact it and ask the ip of google.com so again this tld.com does not have the ip address but it has the information of the server which can provide it the ip address and that is 
the authoritative server so it will return the ip of authoritative name server and it will return the ip of this one to this dns resolver now a dns resolver has the ip of the server which can provide it the ip address of google.com so it contacts this uh, authoritative server and this is the last server in this hierarchy this is authoritative name server and now this dns resolver asks it what is the ip of google.com and this uh, authoritative name server happily returns the ip address that uh, you should contact uh maybe 64.233.160.10 so please contact this ip address this is the ip address of uh, google.com which you want to contact so once this dns resolver gets it it saves in, in into the cache so save to its cache so that next time any client requests any of its uh, users of this isp request for this it can immediately return from the cache and once it saves it into the cache it also returns the ip address back that is 64.233.160.10 and this os again uh, saves it into the cache and it returns the ip the same ip to the browser and now the browser can contact this google.com using the ip address provided so that is how a domain name system works and how different components different servers interact with each other so i hope you understood this flow and i hope that you learned something useful from this video